See you later, person. Bye bye. Did you guys put up with this craziness? <laughs> Theo had a good time on sabbatical. I had a good time on sabbatical. Uh, he spent most of his sabbatical making sure he was not in the way of our two dogs who think he's a dog toy. So, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes... Chapter 11, I'll be starting at chapter 11, verse 7, and going all the way through to chapter 12, verse 7. I forget, when's the, ser the service is over, what, 11.30? Yes, that was a joke. I know when it's over. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, starting at verse 7. Light is sweet, and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all, but let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. You who are young, be happy while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart, and whatever your eyes see, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So then banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigor are meaningless. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, or the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim. When the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when people rise up at the sounds of birds, but all their songs grow faint. When people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred, then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Let's ask God to bless the message this morning. Father, I pray that you will anoint the messenger. It's so good to know that you never go on sabbatical, that your skills never diminish. So, Father, we pray the Holy Spirit will speak through me and that all of our ears will hear the message you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I return from sabbatical, and I go back to the church office, and I say I'm back, and the pastor's like, hey, great to see you. Uh, we'll see you later. And they took off, and they will be gone uh, so you will have me uh, doing the preaching this Sunday and next Sunday. In fact, you'll see a lot of me. I think this is their way of just, I didn't really miss any work. They just kind of kept it piling up, and then they're going to give it to me all at once here. So, um, And so I went to the Lord and said, Lord, I got two Sundays. Uh, what, do you want, um, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to speak about? And he said, I want you to speak about what you learned on your sabbatical. And I thought, that is fantastic. I would love to tell them what I learned. I would love to tell them about Genesis chapter 6, 1 through 4. We spent some time reading about the Nephilim when they walked the earth, the giants, and, and he's not, not that's, that's not what I want to talk about. So, oh, oh, Jude 
Jude, when it talks about how the fallen angels are in Tartarus and, and, and the end, no. Okay, all right. Um, I don't think you want me to talk about the biography of uh, Mr. Rogers that I read. Um, it was a very good book. No. He says, I want you to, I don't want this to be the theological or the eschatological or any of the illogicals. I want this to be the lesson on life that I taught you. Oh, that one. Well, you know, that's not a real, not a real happy one. And he goes, well, yeah, but it's a true one. So, I won't be able to share with you my thoughts and feelings on First Enoch, which is a book in the first century. I'm going to share with you Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. See, life has a way of going by pretty quickly, doesn't it? And it's funny because as I look out, the young are just looking at me like, okay, and the older you are, the more you're ready to say amen. Because what you know in your brain is what you're experiencing now. I got a lot of lessons this sabbatical on how time flies. I realized that, Lord willing, Jesus doesn't return and I can stay healthy. I am about halfway through my ministry. What happened to the days when I would go on sabbatical to talk about the great things that I'm going to do and now just sitting there realizing 24 years went by. 17 of them here. Seven at uh, my last church. 16 years and change. Wow. This is my second sabbatical here. My third sabbatical overall. Wow. I was uh, at my mom's house. Got to visit my mom. Hi, mom. She's watching. Very faithful. And uh, she was showing me pictures uh, that she got from my grandmother's house. And she was showing me all these pictures. Some of them went back, family members, back into the late 1800s. Now, I knew who my grandparents were, my great-grandparents were, but there were a lot of people in those pictures I didn't know. And I sat there thinking about, wow, a hundred years ago, they walked this earth. And now I, we don't even know who they are. And then I realized, well, I'm sitting there, that we're looking at pictures from my grandmother's house, who was my last grandparent living on earth. They're all now living in heaven. And my mom is now in the matriarch role, and I'm now, what was her role? When did that happen? The thing that hit me hardest, though, was I went to a graduation. My son graduated from Houghton University, and I had the privilege of watching him walk and get his diploma in biblical studies. And I'm sitting there. Didn't I just graduate? I met my wife. We graduated. We're going to do this thing called ministry. And that just, that just, and I swear, the week before, I dropped him off for the very first time. It wasn't even Houghton University that it was Houghton College. Now it's Houghton University. Now he's talking about graduate school. And here I am sitting there going, and this happened when? Because it sure flew by. My father did give me a piece of advice that I have found to be true. He said, the older you get, the, the faster time goes. And at the time, I thought, that's impossible. Time, you know, speed of light. Blah, blah, blah. Well, now I know what he means. Life is short. It'll be gone before you know it. And even the memory of our life will be gone. The teacher of Ecclesiastes knew this. And so when he got here to the end of the book, he wanted to deal with, well, what do we do with this thing called life? If it's so short, what do we do? And he starts out with, light is sweet, 
and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However, however many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. The first thing that we should do with this thing called life is enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself. In fact, many of the things in your life, your family, your friends, the beautiful weather that we have outside today, your pets, there are so many things in our lives that God has put there for us to enjoy. The food we eat, the company we keep. But it's amazing how many of us don't enjoy it. We live through it, but we're so busy trying to get to the next thing or thinking about the next place or the next thing on your to-do list that you're living it, but you're not enjoying it. I saw this at the amusement park we went to. Uh, my, when I was down to see my mom, I nephews and nieces, brothers and sisters, we all got together and went to this amusement park. And I saw the same thing I see everywhere now. Everywhere, all these people wandering around. I can't believe they're not bumping into each other because they've got this phone. They're taking a picture of everything and what they're eating. You all know that person who takes a picture of every meal they have. Do they ever get around to eating it? They're taking pictures all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, one, you're never going to look at those. I have hard drives full of pictures I'm never going to see. But the second thing I've kept thinking is, you aren't even enjoying the moment. Instead of recording yourself on the roller coaster, enjoy the roller coaster. Enjoy yourself because... Let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. Enjoy yourself because you'll be old before you know it. It started out with me as playing the sports I love and then just watching the sports I love. And now I can't even, I can't even imagine the pain I would be in doing some of those sports I showed pictures to my family <laughs> at my mom's house. She had pictures uh, from my grandma's house of me at Joshua's age, at 21, and I wanted to go, see, see, I didn't always look like this. I used to be all right. They think I doctored the photos. You're old before you know it. Enjoy yourself. Because when you understand as you go through life, if you understand what waits for you as you get to the end, it gives you perspective. How many of us would enjoy the things that we see if we knew that next year you'd be blind? How much more would you enjoy the food that you eat if you knew that next year you would no longer be able to taste? How many of you would do things differently when it comes to money or how you spend your time if you realize the obstacles and trials and tribulations that will be coming later in life? You have perspective. There was a guy who had perspective when I was in high school. It was the trainer. Uh, he, our school invested in a trainer, a professional trainer, for all of the sports. And his job, yes, was to bind our injuries and wounds and help us out. But the biggest thing he, he brought, and this is why they hired him, was he brought perspective. Because the coaches didn't worry about what you felt like when you were 30 or 40. They wanted to win the game. They were too busy enjoying the moment of winning the game to worry about us. And though they're supposed to, some of them didn't. And us kids, I enjoyed playing the game of football. There were times I was out on that field that I couldn't raise my left arm and I'm bleeding out of here, but this is great. And I'm not thinking about age 30, age 40, age 50. I'm not think. I think I'm an indestructible human being. 
The trainer knows better. And that's why our school gave him the power to take your helmet or your field hockey stick. That's why they put him over top every coach to say whether a person played or didn't play, and they couldn't argue. The reason? Because somebody had to have perspective that there are days coming down the line. And we have to plan for those and not just for the moment. So enjoy yourself, but keep in mind while you're doing it that there are days to plan for and, and a body to conserve. Verse 9, you who are young, be happy while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. Can't believe this is a point in my sermon. Follow your heart. That's what he's saying. Go follow your heart, your desires. What gets you excited, what you love. Go ahead. There's a caveat, though. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. See, not every desire we have is one that God has planted in us. There are desires that God has put in our heart. There are desires that we have, may have come up on our own, but there are desires that come from the enemy and from our sinful nature. And those are not to be indulged. Those are the ones not to follow. Follow your heart. God has put desires in your heart. In fact, I was thinking about when it comes to ministry is, is the one place where God actually breaks into someone's life and says, I want you not to follow your heart. I want you to put your desires over here and I want you to accept my desires for your life. I want you to accept that I'm going to take you where I want you to go to do what I want you to do. And those things that you want to do, I'm asking for you to give up. That's what a calling is. And before you go into ministry, the district superintendent, the bishop, whatever, make sure that you got that calling because it'd be so easy to pick up your desires again. And remember that you gave them up to follow the Lord. Don't worry because once you say yes, then he gives you his desires. And they are great. But for the rest of you, follow your hearts. You want to be a veterinarian? You want to work with children? You want to be a teacher? You, whatever you want to do, like follow your heart. But remember, God will judge your deeds. And he will judge you when you follow the bad desires, just as he will bless you when you follow the ones he placed there. I call this be mindful be mindful of the desires. Growing up, I didn't even realize this until I was studying. You know, central Pennsylvania is, is like its own little culture, but to be honest, sometimes it's like its own little world. And I love that world, but we have weird sayings that I think all of you know, and I'm finding out as I grow. They get older that, no, nobody else knows or says these things. And one of them is, it would not be out of uh, place for my grandma or grandfather or dad or mom or some adult to turn to us as kids when we were about to say something or about to do something or about to make a decision, and they would look at you and they would go, mind? Does anyone even know that? Okay, yep, just me. All right, mind. I knew that if an adult looked at you and said, mind, what they were saying was, be mindful, think. I know what you're about to say. Think. I can see the look in your eye. Do you really want to do that? Usually there were great negative consequences on the other side of that line. Mind. Mind yourself. And that's what God is saying. Think. Does this desire come from me, does it, does it come from the world? Does it come from sin? Go ahead and follow your heart, but make sure that it's the desires I placed because there is judgment. 
for the deeds that you do that are not from him. So mind. You're all looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay. And then there's this in Ecclesiastes 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. You young people have no idea what that means. But let me tell you, things start not working. You start praying not for God to do something great in your life of the day, but you start praying for God to get you out of bed. And you understand that. We are supposed to remember our creator. In fact, the teacher is saying, remember in your youth. Don't, don't wait. Remember now. Remember while you're young. There's, there's two reasons for that. Uh, the first one is because there's going to be a time when you cannot. There's going to be a time when you cannot. Things will begin to break down, including your mind. Many of us have had family members uh, who may have spent the later years of their lives not having control of their mental faculties. It is something that can go. There will become a time that maybe you are so consumed by just getting through the day that you forget to think about eternity. Or maybe there's a time you can't because you've run out of chances. Just because you're breathing doesn't mean you have another chance. Only God knows how many chances you have to turn to him. We went uh, to Sight and Sound in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, saw Moses. It's wonderful. If you can ever see it, go see it. It was great on the life of Moses. And, and I completely forgot where I was going with Moses. It's a senior moment right here. During my sermon, look at that. <laughs> uh, God must not want me to do that one. Okay, moving on. God, you are funny. Uh, and I mean that. God, you are funny. There are some uh, things here, and I won't go through them all, but there's a whole list of things that seem really weird. But let me explain them to you. He's talking about old age. The sun and the lights and the moon and the stars grow dark. He's talking about bad eyesight. Clouds return after the rain. See, usually when you're young, the clouds go away, and what comes out? The sun. Not when you're old. You get through one trial or tribulation just so you can face the next one. Keepers of the house tremble. Tremors begin to shake. You begin to lose control of your motor skills. Strong men stoop. You begin to lose strength and get out of shape. Great giant warriors now can barely make it to the kitchen table. Grinders cease because they are few. Grinders, you're going to lose teeth or you're going to lose a lot of money trying to fix them. Those looking through the windows grow dim. No one wants or needs to visit you anymore. The doors of the street are closed. There's nowhere to go or you don't have the ability to go. The sound of grinding fades. Whilst you're hearing. The doors of the street are closed. Oops, I already did that twice. Look, another senior moment. Sound of grinding fades, no community life. When people rise to the sound of birds, you wake up early, even if you don't want to. All their songs grow faint, they lose uh, their hearing. People are afraid of heights. Did you know, the older you get, the more most of us will become afraid of heights? So if you were scared of heights before, now you're terrified. And if you weren't scared before, now you are. But what that's really talking about is you ever seen somebody who's losing motor control, who has cane, try to take that step? That step to them looks huge. It's a height now. 
You young ones just jump right over it. Dangers in the street. They're afraid to, to leave their home. They can't protect themselves anymore. And then there's this beautiful one. Almond tree blossoms and grasshoppers drag along and desire is no longer stirred. Not much of a clue, to be honest with you. Search many commentaries, but they seem to understand that it means that the will is gone. The get up and go desire just isn't there anymore. What a sunny thing to talk about. And then there's this, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Remember your creator because you're, you're going to be recalled. Sound like a bad part in a car. He called you into existence, and he's going to call you home. And you'll have to make an accounting. Be ready to return. It's coming. Our culture doesn't like to talk about death. We're very uncomfortable with it. And there's a reason for that, because death is not natural. And no one ever tells you that death is natural. It is not natural, because you were made for eternity. You were not made to die. Sin entered the world and your life, and now you must die. But that is not what we were made. We were made for eternity. We have eternity in our hearts, God says. It's not natural to die. We don't like it. We don't like being separated from our loved ones. We don't like saying goodbye. We don't like getting older. But we do have to talk about the fact that we have to be ready. Because today, tomorrow, next week, next year, you're going to return. And the creator is going to ask the created, what did you do with the desires and the gifts that I gave you? Life is short. You'll be sitting at a graduation before you know it. So have perspective. Prepare yourself for those days that are coming be mindful, because the things you do today, you will be judged on tomorrow, and be ready for that return. If you have a perspective, you watch what you do, and you're ready to return, then you can enjoy this thing we call life, no matter how short it is. Because we know that in the end, when we breathe our last here, we will be in the presence of our Lord and Savior and finally enjoy perfection and eternity where we don't have to watch and we don't have to decay. But we got to get there first. Let that be foremost in your mind. Let us pray. Father, I would not have understood this sermon 25 years ago at least not the way I do today. Father, help us though, no matter if we're very young or in the twilight of our life here on earth, to take to heart the lessons that we should enjoy the great things that you've given us, that we should be mindful of the desires that we follow. And most importantly, I pray that we will be ready to return, that we will have received your Son through whom we were created, but who became fully man as well as staying fully God so that he could die on a cross for our sins to open that way. Let us all be found to be ready when we stand before you. We will not stand before you perfect, far from it. We will not stand before you deserving eternity. But we can stand before you because we've been forgiven through your son. Father, help us to live a life that enjoys today, plans for tomorrow, and looks forward to the day when we'll be with you in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand?
as we close with a song.